turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your Welcome to our service on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Um, I've just got a few notices. Um, first of all, we're in the middle of um, Thy Kingdom Come stretch now. So it's started on Thursday on Ascension Day and we'll finish next Sunday on um, Pentecost. And I encourage you to... Um, Pray each day. You can find out more information on the Diocesan website or on the Thy Kingdom Come website. But as part of that, the Bishop has um, encouraged us to think about doing an event on um, Sunday the 23rd, next Sunday, um, at 4pm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, weather permitting, have an outdoor service at 4pm in the grounds of St Thomas's. We're having it outdoors because that enables us to be able to sing. Now there'll be certain rules that we will have to follow in that, so keeping social distance, um, not facing each other as we sing. But um, the plan is that that will be um, a, a service next, for, next Sunday at 4pm. Also next Sunday is our annual general meeting and that's going to be actually built into our Sunday morning service at 10.30. We're doing it this way uh, for two reasons. One is um, it enables us not to have too long a meeting and everything else. But more importantly, it really establishes um, the business of the church as worship and that's something that I'm very keen on um, that we remember that those things are worship just as much as praying or singing songs or reading the Bible 
Um, so that will take part of that. Now what we're going to do is that's going to be at St. Margaret's. So there'll only be a service at, in the church buildings at St. Margaret's next Sunday morning because we're doing the um, event in the evening at St. Thomas's. Um, but we're also going to have that as a Zoom meeting. So those of you who are not yet comfortable or unable to attend um, at the church itself um, can um, can participate um, by joining into Zoom. And that'll go out um, in the news sheet this week um, if that how to attend. Um, log into that Zoom. Um, if you don't get the news sheet, if you just contact me or Phil, we'll get all the. We'll make sure we get the information to you. And for those of you who can't make it to church and um, can't really access Zoom for whatever reason, um, but still want to be participate um, in in a service um, on Sunday morning, we we will also be broadcasting that to YouTube you just won't be able to interact in quite the same way um, that's my main notices um, but please keep an eye out for things that are going to happen within the, the um, church life so let's um Take a few moments of silence as we realise that we are in God's presence this morning, wherever we are. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We're going to start our service today in singing with um, Praise is Rising.
No doubt know that that word, Hosanna, as well as being a cry of praise, is a cry to be saved. And we um, we come now before a God, knowing that we're not perfect, but knowing that in his grace, he has told us that if we confess our sins, then he will forgive us. And so we're going to come now to our time of confession. So let's spend just a few seconds looking back over the week and recalling those places, those things we did or said or thought that we need to bring before him now for his forgiveness. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. And we say together, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord our God, no sorry, the absolution, may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today is this prayer. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness And know your grace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to, as we prepare to hear God's word, we're going to come before him and bow before him in song by singing, We Bow Down.
we come now to hear God's word. And our first reading is from Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, and then 21 to the end. In those days Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from John. Chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world. But they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, 
just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, as I speak, may we hear your word. The word that brings life. The word that protects. And respond wholeheartedly to you. Amen. Well, each Easter, um, when we start, get to Maundy Thursday and the Easter weekend, we seem to rush through it. So we, we get the washing of the feet and then we sort of rush through as quickly as we can, really, I think, in our minds to Jesus' resurrection. Because the bits in between are painful and are difficult. Jesus struggling in the garden. His betrayal. His denial by Peter. His trial, kangaroo caught. His torture and his death are not easy subjects to follow. But they are important ones. And in John's Gospel, we see a swing from that rushing through. Because in the 21 chapters of John, four and a bit of them are dedicated to a time between when Jesus, when Judas left the to go and betray Jesus from the upper room at the Last Supper. To them going out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Four and a bit chapters. And it's easy to read those because we often do in bits and forget what is actually happening emotionally. And in those people's lives, Jesus and the disciples. Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to die. Painfully. Alone. And that wasn't easy for him. That wasn't a breeze for him. It was a difficult time. Emotionally and mentally. And those four chapters, four and a bit chapters, cover part of that period. That preparing yourself for the difficult times. I don't know whether you've ever been in any sort of situation like that where you knew you were going to face a difficult time and you had to prepare yourself. Make yourself ready. And in these four and a bit chapters we see that Jesus gives some final instructions to his disciples. He prepares Peter for his betrayal. He prepares them for being living without him being physically there. And at the end of the four chapters, he prays for them. And this is the part of that prayer that we've read from John. 
it's a powerful prayer. And I encourage you to spend some time reading it. It's a prayer that has um, greatly affected my Christian life. See, some time ago I am... Um, I was part of the drama group in the previous church and uh, felt that we needed to put something on on Good Friday and we did the story of um, uh, Jesus from the Last Supper through to his crucifixion. And um, to prepare for that and to write that and plan the things, I have spent a lot of time reading the Gospels and trying to reconcile them around these four things. I was deeply affected by what I found. Those things we skip over as we go from feet washing to resurrection as fast as we possibly can. But this prayer resounds with God's care for his people, for those who choose to follow him, Jesus wants to put his protection on them, his life, his love within them. He wants to see them blossom and grow. And that's the heart of this prayer. It is prayer that is done from God the Son to God the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if any prayer in the history of time has been answered, it is this prayer. So as we read it, we can take it on board. And what marvel is, so marvels me is that we are let in to the Trinity of God as they stand hand in hand as a ring of life and hope they break the circle and call me in soiled as I am to stand with them hand in hand And they call you. This prayer contains all the grace. All the power. All the love of God for us, his people. And it's my prayer that we as Christians in Brightside and Winkerbank might fully begin to live out the answer to this prayer. For the answer is that we are let in, that they break their circle to allow us to stand with them and work with them to bring about God's kingdom in Brightside and Winkerbank. And that's an exciting An encouraging picture. And yes, it may come at times, with times of trial and suffering. But we can be assured of God's protection and his love. And his calling to work with him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for Jesus. That he came and was willing to go through all he went through. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that has been poured upon us and that we'll celebrate next week who gives us life and guidance. Lord, 
I pray that we will be worthy of your call. That we will join together with you in the circle of love and life and work with you to your glory. Amen. We're going to move on now um, by declaring that we believe in God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to sing again. Um, and this way our time, we're going to sing about how, where we stand in Christ alone.
We come now to our time of intercession. And as we say these prayers together, um, there's a response. Um, when I say, hear us, Father, if you could join with me in saying, you are our strength and joy. Hear us, Father. You are our strength and joy. Let's pray. Remembering our dependence on the power of God for all things. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those whose Christian witness has brought embarrassment, rejection or persecution. That with their sight fixed on Jesus, Christians may be strengthened and encouraged and remain his faithful friends. Hear us, Father. You are our strength and joy. We pray for all negotiators, diplomats, envoys and advisers, that they may seek peace rather than war, unity rather than division, and justice rather than personal success. And we particularly pray for Jerusalem and Israel at this time. For I am sure, as you look on Jerusalem today, you weep, as you did when you were on earth. Hear us, Father. You are our strength and joy. We pray that the healing love of God may work within those who have been discouraged or hurt, all who harbour resentment and the desire for revenge, the lonely, the timid, the vulnerable and the abused. Here is Father. You are our strength and joy. We pray for our local community and all its homes, shops, schools, surgeries and leisure facilities that we as Christians may bring Christ's life and brightness to this place so that it is infused with his love. Hear us, Father. You are our strength and joy. Trustingly, we pray in silence to God our Father, who considers each one of us special.
loving Father, hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer now by joining together in the diocesan prayer, which is his prayer really for God's love to spread through our diocese. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit we may as the Diocese of Sheffield both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And um, we come towards the end of our service now. And we've got our last song. And we're going to sing about the splendour of the King. And how great is our God. Sing the splendour of the King. The splendour of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great Is our God And all will see How great How great Is our God And age to age He stands And time is in His hand Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God? Sing with me, how. I got and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise, my heart will sing. me how great is our God and no one will see how great how great is our God how great how great how great is our God 
Sing with me how great is our God And all will sing how great, how great is our God How great, how great is our God Sing with me how great is our God So we've just got a blessing now coming to the end just to remind you of what's happening next week. Um, so there'll be a service that includes the annual general meeting um, in St Margaret's at 10.30. That can be attended either in person or there'll be a Zoom connection into the service um, and the service will also be broadcast onto YouTube, but you won't be able to participate in the same way. And then at 4pm um, at St Thomas's in the grounds, we're praying for sunny weather. Uh, we're going to have an outdoor service where we'll be able to sing God's praises together. So final blessing. May God give to you and all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And may that hallelujah resound in your life this week. God bless you and goodbye.